Hello and welcome back to the NFL DFS Slate Breakdown for Monday Night Football, November 27th, Cyber Monday. Now before we get into the slate, come join us. $39.99 per month gets you access to everything we do, all the props, all the DFS for all the sports. Or you could use our Black Friday Cyber Monday deal, which is if you buy the yearly pass, you do get a free t-shirt and hat to go with it. Just make sure to fill out the jot form attached. All you got to do is click this little Black Friday spot here and fill out the necessary information and obviously purchase the year. All right. Now, we got a uh, Vikings or sorry, Barriers versus Vikings game. It is in Minnesota, I think it is a fairly interesting game. There are definitely a couple different spots to go, and we will break that all down now. So, breaking down the quarterback spot, uh, Dobbs has a slightly better matchup. Minnesota has struggled a little bit versus quarterbacks, uh, you know, outside of the first couple games. Since then, they have been much better against quarterback. Uh, they've also played not quite as good of quarterbacks. Jalen Hurts absolutely crushed them. And due to the fact he got 35 rushing yards and two touchdowns on the ground. Now, Fields can definitely add those touchdowns on the ground. And uh, that is how he will make, you know, make his salary pay off. Uh, Dobbs is in the better matchup. A lot of. A lot of guys have thrown over two quarterbacks versus the Bear or over two touchdowns versus the Bears this season. Dobbs line at 1.5 touchdowns is plus 135. I think it's a very interesting bet to make, but it also shows that, you know, there is a decent chance that he's actually throwing two plus touchdowns in this game. And the other thing we need to bring up is since he has been with the Vikings, he's been running a lot more and designed runs. He has four rushing touchdowns in his last four games, actually five in his last five games. So he's been rushing a lot better. The matchup is fairly good for him versus bear defense. So I think Dobbs is a very interesting play. Now we know he's going to get high ownership. DraftKings, he's 75%. Fields is 65%. Uh, sorry, that is FanDuel. And then on DraftKings, uh, both quarterbacks are coming in at about 75%. So now let's move it over to the running back spot and let's see what we got. So Dante Foreman, uh, technically listed as the RB2, but he has been downgraded out. So that is going to be Roshan Johnson who gets this matchup and it is a decent one. He is pretty good catching the football and I think that is where he could excel if this game environment is one where the Vikings get out to a quick lead and we see a little bit more of Roshan I think he's interesting uh in this spot the other thing to note is because Foreman's out it is a two-headed monster not three last week the Bears did rely on three running backs it's going to be two running backs this week so both running backs Herbert and Roshan Johnson get a little bit of a bump up and I'm interested in both of them. Uh, Tyson Chandler, who is the RB two for Minnesota has a decent matchup. Couple RB twos have done pretty well versus uh, the bears. And more importantly in the pass catching work, McKinnon did well. P Ryan did well. Gibson did well. Uh, where is, yep. So Gibson four for 64. Uh, a lot of these guys have got it done through the pass, which is likely the way that Chandler and Madison are both able to get it. The bears are actually pretty good on the ground. If you note, you know, 13th versus RB one and Madison has a poor matchup, uh, the Lions were able to find success with both their running backs doing extremely well, but that is a very, very good offensive line, and I don't think many teams can do that. Definitely do not believe the Vikings can. 
Now, all of them are in consideration. Don't really love one more than, you know, the rest. I would pretty much rely on ownership to tell me that. So Madison's coming in the highest zone, 38%. Herbert, 30%. Roshan, 19%. And Chandler, 13%. One thing that's very interesting to note with Chandler, last week, 10 carries, 4 receptions uh, in a close game. And Madison, 18 carries, 2 receptions or 2 targets. So Madison definitely got a little bit more work, but not much more work. So at 14% owned and 2K and less salary, Chandler is very interesting. And we move it on to the DK side. Herbert, 52% owned. Madison, 42 Chandler and Roshan, both around 10%. And at 10%, I think both guys are interesting. As I noted, Chandler is getting real work. You know, he's it's almost, say, a 55-45 split or maybe 60-40 Addison, Madison to Chandler. Regardless, I think it's extremely interesting to go 10% owned Chandler. And Roshan at a cheap salary, 10% is kind of interesting. He's definitely playing. He had six targets or six carries last week. Five carries and six targets the week before. He is getting involved. He is being used. And if he's able to get some, if he gets six targets again, he's going to be a very interesting play at low ownership and a low price point. So he is definitely one I am interested in. Next, we got good old wide receiver. So uh, Powell definitely has the best matchup for the wide receivers. He is getting consistent work since uh jackson has been out between three to five targets and i don't mind going here today at low ownership and a cheaper price definitely will have some interest there addison is my clear-cut favorite run uh wide receiver on this slate i do think there's a very good chance for him to get a touchdown very good chance at him to get 10 plus targets and it's a spot where WR1s have done well against the Bears, so I'm interested in Addison. Uh, DJ Moore is definitely interesting as well, uh, just due to the fact of his rapport with Fields, who all of his big games have been with Fields. He commands a lot of targets from Fields, averaging over 80 yards a game. I think it's an interesting play to go uh, with more, even though he is in a little bit of a difficult matchup. Uh, KJ Osborne, super tough matchup. He is probably the third, fourth wide receiver I'd consider today. Looking at ownership here, we got Brandon Powell, super high owned for good reason. As we see Addison also high owned as we see, and then KJ Osborne, uh, DJ Moore, Mooney and Scott. Mooney is a okay call. He is low owned, but he is somebody that can provide a big play, which is definitely interesting because, you know, one play can really make his night and at low ownership, if it hits, it's a real nice uh, slate changer. And on to Giraffe King's ownership, Brandon Powell is the highest owned, Jordan Addison at 37%, DJ Moore at 27 Now, with DJ Moore being around 27-ish, I think he's a very, very interesting play, as is uh, Darnell Mooney. Now, let's get over to the tight end matchup. So, Hawkinson has the best matchup. He's also the most used. The one thing I will point out is while a lot of tight ends are are getting to that 40, 50 yard mark. There's none really breaking the slate. Uh, Kelsey had the best game, 69 yards and a touchdown, 77 and a touchdown from uh, Logan Thomas, 50 yards, no touchdowns from TJ Hawkinson. So while I like Hawkinson and he is definitely one of the better plays on the slate, I don't absolutely love him if he's at higher ownership you know, I could think about getting off of him. Uh, meanwhile, Komet has had some real good games. 
and he is definitely one of the more favorite uh, pass catchers for the Bears. I do have some worry, though. It does seem like Fields does not target him quite as much. However, he did have this two-touchdown game with Fields. It is possible he does link up with Fields sometimes, but I don't absolutely love the spot. Um, and as you can see, you know, Minnesota is six versus tight end. So it's not a, you know, great spot for commit. So look at an ownership here, Hawkinson at 31%. It's not enough for me to really get off of him. He is clearly the best tight end play and I'd be intrigued. His salary is a bit up there though. Commit fine. Uh, both tight ends. You absolutely do need to consider one of the guys we have not talked about and we should I think is Munt. Munt has been involved a little bit. Um, and when I say Munt, I actually mean Josh Oliver. Oliver has been involved very, very much lately. Four targets last week with a touchdown. Uh, two a couple weeks before that. I think that with his level of involvement at super low ownership, he is worth at least consideration. In consideration, especially on DraftKings, where that minimum price is much lower and that's where we're heading now hawkinson 9k 55 percent owned commit 44 percent owned uh oliver 2600 2.8 percent owned i think he's a very interesting low owned target to go you know that's how we win these uh contests and at least win them solo is uh by a very low owned play coming through so i think oliver is in a very good spot defensive wise uh vikings 28 percent owned but really i don't think there's any reason the bears should be so low owned here i think the bears are in just as good of a situation as the vikings for their defense and the bears d has actually been playing fairly well lately so i uh i don't mind taking the bears in this spot at low ownership whatsoever. And then on fan duel ownership for the defenses are fairly similar. Uh, bears are just a little bit more expensive than they are on DraftKings. And both kickers are in play with a 43 point game total. Uh, kickers defenses are very, very much in play. If that game does not go over, there's likely to be a defense or kicker or both in the lineup so do not be shy about playing your kickers all right guys have a good one we will be back shortly with more dfs this week and let's go good luck